In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google My Maps for planning your next road trip. If you never use My Maps or don't know where to start, stay tuned. Hello there, welcome to Coasters and Travels. I do roller coaster POVs, trip vlogs, and more. If you want to support my channel and help it grow, please like, comment, share, and definitely subscribe. With that out of the way, let's get started. What is My Maps? My Maps is a service from Google where you can create your own custom maps. You can add places, directions, lines, shapes, and custom markers. You can also share your map to others, embed it to a web page, and view your map on Google Maps. To access My Maps, just search for My Maps and it should be the first result. If you're not logged in Google, you'll be prompted to log in. After you log in, you'll be introduced to the main page. If you made any maps in the past, you'll see them on the screen, otherwise it's just an empty page. Click on Create a New Map. What you see now is your own custom map. To name your map, click on Untitled Map and give it a name. A description is optional. Let's take a quick look at the map options. Click the three dots next to the map name. New map will create a new blank map. Copy map will make a duplicate of the current map. Open a map will allow you to open a different map you created. Move to bin will move the map to the bin on your Google Drive. This is basically your way of deleting a map. Set view to default will set the current view as your default view. Embed on my site will give you a code to add to a web page, but only if your map is set to public. More on that later. Export to KML KMD allows you to display your map on a 3D map such as Google Earth. And print map allows you to print your map. To add a place, just click in the search bar and add a place of your choice. I'll add Orlando as an example. As you can see, the map zooms toward the location. At this point, you can add the location to your map. Simply click Add to Map. Your place is now under a layer. A layer is a space where you can add your places and other objects. Let's check the layer options by clicking the three dots here. Rename this layer allows you to rename the layer. Delete this layer will delete the layer. Open data table will show your places in table format. You can edit the names and descriptions here if you so choose. Layers can also be dragged and move around. Click and hold the cursor over the layer's name and drag up or down. Let's add some places in Orlando. But first, let's remove the Orlando marker. To remove a place, click a place within the layer and the place should appear on the map. Click the trash icon to delete the place. Now let's add some new places. Let's add a hotel. Oh, and let's add some places to eat. Okay, now we have a mix of different places. And while this is nice, it can be organized a little better. You can use multiple layers to help organize your places. First, let's add two more layers. To add a new layer, click on Add Layer. Let's name the first layer Theme Parks. The second layer Lodging. And the third layer Places to Eat. Now, let's drag the places to their appropriate layers. There, it looks a lot more organized and you can also turn off a layer to hide places within that layer. Just uncheck the box next to the title, for instance, if you just want to see theme parks. To further customize your locations, you can change the look of your place markers. Drag the mouse over the place within the layer and click the icon that looks like a paint bucket. 
You can also click the place on the map and click the same icon. You can change the color and the look of the place markers. Let's give this place marker a green color and we're going to add a theme park icon. If you can't find the icon you're looking for, click more icons. You get more options here and you can filter them by typing search parameters. In our case, something that resembles amusement parks. I type amuse in the filter box and get the icon I'm looking for. If you still can't find your icon, you can upload a custom icon. Click the custom icon button and as you can see, you have multiple options to upload your own icon. Click OK once you're done. Let's do the rest with the other parts. For hotel, I'm going purple with a sleep icon. And for restaurants, I'm keeping the blue but changing the icon to something more appropriate. If you want to add a picture to your location, click the place on the map or layer and click the camera icon on the pop-up window. From there, choose your picture and it will show up in the pop-up window when you click the place. To change the look of your map, click the down arrow here and you'll have different styles to choose from. To share your map to friends, click the share button. From there you enable link sharing and the option to make your map public to the internet. This is important if you want to embed your map to a web page. To see your map on Google Maps, click preview and you'll get a nice preview of how your map will look in Google Maps. To see your map on your phone, go to Google Maps, then go to saved. Click maps and then click on your custom map. You can now view your map, show or hide layers, and even get directions by clicking on a place. All right, you have what you need to get started at this point. The rest of the video will go over features that aren't necessary but can be useful for your planning. So let's get to it. Directions are straightforward. You provide the points and a route is created. Under the search bar, click the arrow icon. A new layer will appear with a set of blank directions. You can add a place by either typing in the field or click on a place marker on your map. To add a new destination, click add destination at the bottom of the layer. You can add up to 10 destinations per layer. Directions are useful if you want to visualize how your trip will pan out. Not useful if you're avoiding certain roads like a toll road since directions will choose the best route regardless of tolls, road closures, and etc. Also, they are only a visual representation, so even though you can see it on your map, GPS won't work for it, so you must pay attention to direction changes. Custom markers are another features of my map. Most places are searchable through the search bar, but any place that's not represented, a custom marker can be of use. Click on the marker icon under the search bar. Once you place it anywhere on your map, you can give the marker a title and a description. Just like your places, you can change the color and the icon of your marker as well as using custom icons. One good use for custom markers is for making notes. There is no official way to add notes to your map, so this is the next best thing. You can place the marker out on the side somewhere and change the appearance to a dot to mask its appearance a little better. Let's add two notes. One saying wake up at 11 a.m. and the other saying leave park by four. This is just a small example of how you can use custom markers creatively to personalize your map a bit more. You can add lines and shapes to your maps. Click on the draw the line icon and click add line or shape. 
To create lines, just click anywhere on the map. You can single click to add a point and double click to end the line. You can give your line a name and description. To create a shape, connect the lines together. You can also give your shape a name and description. You can add a driving, biking, or walking route in the same manner as adding a line. Let's add a driving route. Click on draw the line icon and click add driving route. Click add a starting point on the map. Single click to add points to the route and double click to end the route. Adding a route in this manner would create a new layer. You can only have one route per layer. Let's do a walking route. Let's go to SeaWorld and make a walking route to the roller coaster Mako. Let's first change the map style to satellite. Now let's find the entrance to SeaWorld. Let's click the entrance here, and now let's find Mako. Double click on the Mako marker and the route will complete itself. Now you have a walking route to Mako. One thing to note, just like directions, adding a route is only a visual representation, so it will not work with GPS, so keep that in mind. You can measure distance and areas on your map. Click on the ruler icon under the search bar and click from one point of the map to another. You'll see the distance between the two points. You can add as many points as you want and you can also connect them together to measure the area. Unlike the other features, measurements are not stored in any layer. It's on the screen temporarily until you click somewhere else on the map. However, they're a quick way of measuring a certain distance or area. The last feature I want to discuss is layer customization. If you click where it says individual styles, you'll see a pop-up appear. Click the drop-down box on top. You'll notice a couple of style options. We're currently on individual styles, meaning you can style your place markers any way you want. Uniform style will group everything within the layer under a standard place marker. Sequence of numbers will sort your places in numerical order from top to bottom. You can drag the places around to your liking. Sequence of numbers do not work with lines and shapes. If you click the drop down at the bottom, you have options to set labels for everything in the layer. The default option is none. Name will show the name next to your place, line, or shape on your map. And description will show the description next to them. And there you have it a fully customizable map that you can use even while on your trip. My maps isn't perfect, but it's free and it has a lot of options for trip planning. I really hope this video was of use to you. If so, please like, comment, and share so others can have the opportunity to view it as well. Thanks for watching and have a good one.